Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, I have a really exciting dessert recipe to share with you guys. I'm gonna be sharing my version for quinches, also known as quenches. And this is a dessert that you can find from almost any street vendor or street cart in Guyana. Now, it is basically a cassava bread of sorts that is stuffed with a sweet coconut filling, very similar to something like Solara or red bread. And it's obviously colored red as well. And as you guys can see, it's peeking out of the cassava bread that I made. It's very delicious. I love the flavor of it. And as this is something that I didn't really grow up eating or seeing here in the US really, I decided to go ahead and experiment with it and finally get around to sharing this recipe because a lot of you requested it. If I'm not mistaken, this is a dessert that's normally served in Georgetown, Guyana. But if you guys know of any other places around Guyana that does serve or make this dish, please leave your comments down below and let me know because I'm learning as well. So if you wanna see how I put together this dessert, please keep on watching. Now the first thing that I'm going to do to put together this recipe is create the filling that's going to go in between the quenches. So basically in a heavy bottom pot you want to go in with some freshly grated coconut and yes I really recommend using freshly grated coconut over the already grated stuff because you will get a much better product. You're going to put it into your pan on a medium heat and you're going to pan roast it in the dry pan for about 5-10 to 10 minutes until you see it gets a little bit golden brown. So my coconut's been frying up in my pan here for about 5 minutes at this point. As you guys can see there's a few golden brown specks all over the coconut and at this point I'm going to go in with some freshly ground nutmeg. The freshly ground nutmeg will add such a beautiful flavor to this filling and something that you do not want to miss. And at this point I'm also going in with some freshly grated ginger. If you didn't have the fresh ginger, you could use powdered ginger, but the fresh ginger does give more of a pungent and fresh taste to the filling. Once you finish mixing in that nutmeg as well as the ginger, you're going to turn off your stove and you're going to mix in some brown or white sugar as well as some vanilla or mixed essence. Now the reason why I turn off the stove when I add the sugar in is because if you were to cook the sugar alongside the coconut on any type of heat, what happens is not only does the sugar melt, but it also starts to get crystallized a little bit in the pot. And when this mixture cools down, your coconut mixture will turn dry versus nice and juicy like how we want the filling to be. So make sure your heat is off and you stir in the sugar really well and that residual heat will actually allow the sugar to melt within the coconut. And at this point, I'm also going to go in with some red food coloring. Now red coloring is the traditional color to put inside these quenches, but I'm sure you could play around with other colors if you're feeling festive and want to just play around with another color, or you can go ahead and leave it plain if that's your prerogative as well. So I'm going to mix in this red food coloring really well. And then I'm going to cover the pot and I'm going to set it aside while I work on the cassava mixture for the cassava bread part. And just a quick tip that I have for you guys, I do recommend using gel food coloring or powdered food coloring because the liquid food coloring sometimes carries a bitter taste or a bitter note to it. So I don't really use that in my cooking. But if that's all that you can use, of course use it. Just make sure you're mindful of how much you're adding in. Once you finish making that coconut filling, we are going to start making the cassava bread mixture. Basically what you have to do is you have to take some fresh cassava and you have to peel it and chop it up into chunks. Once you chop it into chunks, you're going to grate it on the finest side of your grater and you're going to get a very mushy grated mixture as you see here. And I do recommend that if you have access to fresh cassava that you use that because that will yield the best product versus the frozen one that you can find in your grocery store. Now once your cassava has finished being grated, you're going to go ahead and put a small mixture or a small piece of the mixture into a tea towel or a cheesecloth that you have over a bowl. Basically what we're going to do throughout this process is extract all of the juice from that cassava. The reason why we do this is so we can create somewhat of a cassava flour to make the cassava bread. You don't want any moisture left in it, you want it mostly dry for the most part. So as you guys can see, I just wrapped it up really tight in the towel. I took about a half cup portion of my grated cassava, put it in the towel, and now I'm squeezing it as hard as I can. You want to keep on squeezing it until all of that juice is out and you get a powdery flour-like substance left in the inside of the towel. And once you feel like you cannot squeeze any more and you get all of that cassava juice out, you are done with that batch. You can set that part aside and you can start squeezing the rest of the mixture. Now after you finish squeezing each little batch of cassava and you break it apart, this is what you guys should get. A very crumbly, almost powdery mixture when you feel it in between your fingers. Something that is pretty much dry for the most part and no longer is very clumpy or has a lot of moisture in it. Now once I finished squeezing all of my cassava and I emptied it out into this bowl, 
you guys are gonna see that you get a very floury and powdery mixture. Now, if you do have a lot of lumps like you saw in the previous screen, what you're gonna wanna do is keep playing with it in between your fingers just to go ahead and break up all of those lumps so this way you can get more of a powdery texture. And now at this point, you have your cassava flour ready to make the cassava bread to be on the outside of your quenches. So although I'm not sure of the traditional, traditional method of making these quenches, I found this method to be the easiest for filling them and getting them formed. Now, while I'm sure there are some people in Guyana that make this and probably do it free form on their pan, I found that by using a cookie cutter to go ahead and form them, I got a very uniform product and all of them were the same size and there was very minimal mess to clean up in the end. So what I have here is a three inch cookie cutter. You could use something that's bigger, you could use something that's smaller. And basically you are gonna take about two to three tablespoons of that cassava flour mixture and you're going to put it in the middle of that three inch or whatever size cookie cutter that you're using. Now my tawa that I'm using is on the lowest heat on my stove. You don't want it higher than a low heat because if it's higher than that, these will burn very quick on the outside and not finish cooking on the inside. Remember, they're going to be pretty thick because you have a layer of the cassava bread that needs to cook, you have the filling on the inside, and you have another layer of cassava bread on the top that needs to cook as well. So I went in with about three tablespoons of my mixture and you basically want to keep adding it in until you get the thickness you desire. Some people like a very thick cassava bread on the outside, some people like it thinner. So just go ahead and put as much as you want, make it as thick as you want, and you're gonna use the help of a spoon to go ahead and pat it down very compact inside the bottom of the cookie cutter to be flat on the tawa. And once you've added in that layer of cassava bread and you are happy with how much you added in, you're gonna go in with that coconut mixture. I'm using about two tablespoons, but again, you could use as much or as little as you'd like. And then once you put the coconut filling on, you can take some more of that cassava flour mixture that we created, and you're gonna put it on top of the coconut mixture, and you're gonna keep patting it down until the coconut mixture is no longer visible. The reason why you wanna cover it up totally is because as it's cooking on the flip side of the quenches, that coconut filling can leak out, and if it starts to leak out, it actually it can actually burn on the tawa. So you wanna make sure you don't really have any of that coconut mixture exposed on the top. And again, as you're forming and filling these, make sure that you press it down really well with a little spoon so this way everything is compact because if it's loose, it will fall apart when you go to flip it. So as you guys can see, I removed that cookie cutter. All you need to do is go ahead and carefully wiggle the cookie cutter out from the sides of the cassava bread. And then as soon as you take that cookie cutter off, you can go ahead and flip it. As you guys can see, I am being very, very careful as I flip this over. You can see that the first side is just a little bit golden. That's exactly what you want. Basically, you're gonna to begin to cook these on each side for maybe about two to three minutes, maybe even four minutes, depending on how thick you make them, until both sides are a nice golden brown color and you feel that it's just squishy in the middle. That's exactly what you want. And if you find that your quenches are not cooking fast enough, you can go ahead and cover them with a lid to one of your pots that you have in your kitchen. And just make sure that the lid is not touching them so this way they get wet with water. You just want the lid to be over it so they can steam and cook on the inside. And this may be a little bit of a tedious process for you to complete. I won't lie to you guys, as I was forming the first few, it did take a long time for me to get it right. But once you get into the groove of things, you can go ahead and get about a batch of three to four on your pan to begin cooking and roasting on that towel. Now, as you guys can see, my quenches are nice and golden brown on each side. At this point, I'm gonna remove them from the pan and I'm gonna put them in a container that I've lined with a paper towel and you wanna cover that container very tight so this way they can almost steam. This is so this way they don't dry out and get too hard after they're done cooking. And once you finish your first batch of quenches, you can go ahead and begin another batch. Again, like I said, as you get into the groove of things, they will become quicker to make and faster to make. Just make sure that you are not rushing because if you rush and try to put the heat on a higher heat, I promise you they will burn and they will turn hard while they are still raw on the inside. And that is not what you want. And again, I just wanted to go ahead and repeat the amount of cassava that you add in to make the thickness of the cassava bread, as well as the amount of coconut that you add in the middle for the filling is totally dependent on how much of everything you want and the ratio that you want. Some people might like a thinner quench, some people like a thicker quench. Um, I like mine sort of in the middle, just as you see here on the pan, but just do it as per your own taste and your own preferences. And after every batch is done cooking, you might see that there are some cassava flakes all over the tawa or the pan that you're using. You're just gonna wanna go ahead and take a paper towel or a dish towel and go ahead and just brush off all of those pieces. The reason why we do this is because over time, as you keep cooking the rest of the batches, 
these little particles may begin to burn and they might affect the taste as well as the texture of your punches that you're making. Now I feel that this is pretty self-explanatory but since you are putting the cookie cutter directly on the hot surface to cook, you want to make sure that you're using a metal or stainless steel cookie cutter and not a plastic one because obviously plastic will melt while on the hot surface. So all of my quenches are done and I am ready to dig in. I have my cup of tea waiting and ready to go ahead and dip these in and eat them. Now I'm using a serrated knife to cut them because that is the easiest way to cut them if you wanted to. And I'm going to show you guys what they look like in the middle. As you guys can see, that coconut filling is super juicy on the inside. As you guys also see, I do like more filling to the outside ratio, but again, make it as per your own taste and preferences. And I do recommend that if you want it to keep soft for days after you're done making it, do not make it too thin. Mine was just right, but if you make it a little thinner than this, they will start to get hard. But other than that, this is exactly what you're looking for. Something that's very juicy and sweet in the middle, and on the outside you have a dense and soft cassava bread mixture. And you guys, this recipe was all kinds of deliciousness. I just took a bite, and that bite was pure perfection. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Make sure when you click that red subscribe button, you also click the little bell icon right next to it. So this way you are notified every time I make a post on my YouTube page or I post a new video. And this way you will never be behind on all that my channel has to offer. And of course, do not forget to leave your amazing comments and keep leaving amazing recipe requests such as this. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye everyone.